tonight's Second Chance Theater is a sketch that you guys worked on uh, together uh, called Unicorn. That's right, yeah, this was from the, um, one of the last episodes of my first year writing for SNL, so 2010. And um, it went to dress with an actress uh, named uh, Betty White. Yeah. From the very beginning, this sketch was an uphill battle. Uh, Betty was not fully on board. Can you talk a little bit about, about the why? Yeah, so um, I got uh, just kind of blindsided by this. I got called into her dressing room. It had gone well on Wednesday, and, and I assumed she liked that it was getting laughs and people were nice about it. And uh, I got called into her dressing room on Friday or Saturday, <laughs> and her manager, who's uh, much older than her, <laughs> uh, started just laying Somehow. into me and slapping the coffee table and saying, we said no animals! Right. <laughs> and uh, I, I was just flabbergasted. We, we didn't have a, an actual horse playing the unicorn even. It was always a very fake stuffed animal. But um, so I was confused by that. And then um, we, we, I tried to talk to him about how the unicorns aren't um, actual animals and um, yeah. how um, there was kind of a fun in that Betty White is the most unlikely of people to be this cold unicorn euthanizer. Yeah. And, um, and we just kind of lost, and then our concession we realized this week when we look back at the final dress script was we put a paragraph at the end where Betty says no unicorns were her, and it's not a joke. It's for other people out there who were maybe worried <laughs> a bizarre, jokeless moment in yep. SNL. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And now there was, a, you know, I think all, all three of us would agree, SNL has the best um, staff in the world, uh, yep. you know, best props, best wardrobe, best hair and makeup. And when you first brought this sketch to them, they, it wasn't necessarily going to just be fake unicorns, right? Yeah, they, they offered to get a, a horse and put a, a horn on it. <laughs> Which now that that to me seems like some animal cruelty might be involved. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We probably should have let them know, like Betty, know that and our manager that hey, we could have gone this route and we didn't <laughs> because of you. Yeah, the only other option was, I think Lauren's daughter at that time had a real unicorn, which I know we're not supposed to talk about. Right, I know. It's, it's very much but, like, yeah, I think yeah. Lauren showed us pictures and said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, it should be noted, because I do want to uh, take some of this onus off uh, uh, Betty White. This, you did try it one other time. Yeah, in my third season, we did it with Farrell, and it's more the version that we're doing for Second Chance Theater, where it's a little bit more about the back and forth between the, what was Jason and Farrell. And I, I can't Will really Farrell, the Will Farrell, one of the <laughs> all time greatest sketch actors. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, not, not that Colin Farrell wouldn't have crushed it. Totally yeah. capable. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. Giving yeah. it his all. <laughs> and, and, and F Will Farrell liked it and tried really hard. And I, my memory is it went medium then. <laughs> <laughs> and it maxes out at medium. <laughs> <laughs> and now the other thing that's very, so now we're admitting right now we're about to show people a sketch that, uh, that bombed with Betty White and only did medium uh, with uh, Will Ferrell. Is this the worst? Was Betty White Unicorn the worst uh, either of you ever bombed a dress? Ooh. I, I have one worse, and it was uh, <laughs> Mulaney and I wrote one where We'd read a true story that um, Stephen Hawking uh, was seen going to a strip club in England. Yeah. And, and that the guy in the article was interviewed as saying, um, yeah, every time he comes in, I always say, Stephen, do you want to talk about planets or do you want to just look at the ladies? And Stephen always says, just the ladies this time. <laughs> and so Mulaney and I wrote a sketch about what an idiot that guy would be. <laughs> But as soon as Fred came out in a wheelchair and was like talking in an electronic voice, the, the yeah. audience, I mean, I think some crew guys walked out. Yeah. 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 They and it like should that be noted, this was, not some, this was not some ad hominem attack. This was, uh, this was ripped from the headlines. Yeah. Yes. It was like a, but, a great uh, episode nobody, of I should say it was ripped from a, a headline that not a lot of people had seen, so it definitely <laughs> felt like you had made it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, which just seems like it's such a random weird thing to say about him. There's a couple things we should note, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna come back and watch this thing. Uh, one, 
obviously it was meant to be a live sketch. Uh, we shot it in three different locations. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, the cat, the children were always played by cast members. Uh, so you had people uh, like Nassim Pedrad and Abby Elliott and Vanessa Bayer all playing uh, uh, children. Uh, mm -hmm. We did, uh, Sudeikis and I, we used our kids. Yep. Uh, and I think it adds to the uh, verisimilitude of a yes. uh, mythological beast sketch called Unicorn. So um, yeah. we're going to all watch it together. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. Uh, everybody stick around for uh, the first performance on television of Unicorn.